assalamu alaikum and welcome back in part b we discussed uh, supply chain strategy and its uh, four levels of evolution and six important components of supply chain strategy in part c we will discuss uh, the types of supply chain based on supply and demand uncertainty we will start with the product uh, segmentation uh, this is based on an article by Marshall Fisher that was published in Harvard Business Review back in 1997. And he classified the products into two categories, functional products and innovative products. So functional products are the ones that have predictable demand and innovative products have unpredictable demand. So he, he differentiated between these two types of products based on different features. One of them is product life cycle. So functional products have high or longer life cycle as compared to innovative products. So maybe more than two years for functional and three months to one year for innovative. Contribution margin of functional products is low as compared to innovative products. Product variety is low for functional products that is high for innovative products. Average margin of error in the forecast at the time production is committed is low. In the case of functional products, you can uh, make relatively accurate forecasts, but forecast error is high in the case of innovative products. Every stock out rate is low, very low in the case of functional products, but that is much higher in the case of innovative products. Average forced end of season markdown as percentage of full price is almost zero. There, is, there are no such uh, markdowns for, there are no such uh, markdowns for the functional products, but we do have for innovative products. Lead time required for make to order products is high in the case of functional products as compared to innovative products. So if you have to make <coughs> an altogether new variant of the product, so that will require a lot of time in the case of functional products because processes and operations are standardized in this case. So it is very hard to change those processes to make entirely new products but processes are very flexible, adaptive in the case of innovative products. So you can easily make a new variant of an innovative product. So that is, uh, uh, that is a comparison of these two types of products. And just to understand these, you can have some uh, common product in your mind, something like ceiling fan, for example, and something like smartphone here, so you can get an idea, you can, you can better understand these factors and two types of products by keeping these examples in mind. Now, here the concept will start to converge. The concept that we have discussed so far from lecture 1-1 as well as lecture 1-2, they will converge. So you might have noticed, okay, we will come to this point uh, after one slide, but here one term was used that was product life cycle. So what is, uh, what is that? Let's see that. So the product life cycle can be defined as the stages a new product goes through from beginning to end. That is stages that product passes through from introduction through growth, maturity, and decline. So time from initial research and development to the time at which sales and support of the product to customers are withdrawn. So there is uh, time on the x-axis and sales on the y-axis. So of course there are no sales when the product is being developed. It is in R&D or its, its prototypes are being developed and tested. And in the introduction phase, the uh, sales of the product starts and it, it keeps on increasing and increasing until it reaches a peak and then the sales start to decline and eventually at one stage either that product is withdrawn its production is abundant or a new variant of that product is introduced so on the y-axis it could be sales or it could be profit as well 
Now, important point to keep in mind is that every product actually follows this curve. The only difference is that the time frame, the amount of time could vary. So a product could have a life cycle of say two decades, 20 years until it is withdrawn. It is no more manufactured or new variant of it has been introduced. And yet another product might have uh, this time of let's suppose one year say, or even less than that. So the curve, shape of the curve is almost the same, but the amount of time that uh, the amount of time of uh, life cycle that can significantly vary. So that is high in the case of functional products, but that is low in the case of innovative products. Another important point to be kept in mind is that this, uh, this curve is also very important. This cycle is very important with respect to marketing. So there is a different marketing strategy for a product that is in the introduction phase, different for a product that is in the growth phase, maturity and decline. Not only the marketing strategy is different, but production strategy also is different. So it is very important to understand the life cycle of a product. And at the moment we are seeing how this life cycle actually can classify functional and innovative products. And based on that, we can devise our supply. So for functional products, we have physically efficient supply chain. And for innovative products, we have market responsive supply chain. So what is a physically efficient supply chain? And as we have seen repeatedly in, in our uh, production environments, four production environments and five business strategy, that word efficiency for the most time is related to cost. So efficiency means we are targeting low cost. And that low cost can then be achieved in different ways. So primary purpose of efficient supply chain is to supply predictable demand efficiently at the lowest possible cost. But for market responsive supply chain, the main focus is to quickly respond to unpredictable demand in order to minimize stockouts, force markdowns, and obsolete inventory. Manufacturing focus is to maximize the utilization. Here, actually, the focus is on flexibility. So we need to have some extra capacity. Inventory strategy is high inventory turnovers to quickly turn the inventory into finished products and overall minimize the inventory throughout the system. Here, the focus of inventory strategy in responsive supply chain is to deploy significant buffer stocks, extra inventory of parts or finished goods in order to uh, satisfy some unpredictable demand. As we saw, the demand is unpredictable, so, so we need extra capacity as well as extra inventory in order to address that unpredictable demand. Lead time focus here in physically efficient supply chain is to reduce lead time as long as possible and this is directly related to high inventory turnover. In responsive supply chain, the goal is to invest aggressively in ways to reduce lead time. Here we also want to reduce lead time, but it is relatively difficult because uh, we are, it is actually, let me say not difficult, but it is even more important in a way because uh, we have to introduce a new product in the market. So we have to do it before our competitors. So we have to actually uh, aggressively reduce it. We have to make sure that it, it is reduced at least to the point that our organization is the first to uh, introduce that product in the market because there are two things. One is time to market and other is time to volume. And both these are very important. Time to market, how quickly we introduce a new product and second is time to volume how quickly we can actually reach uh, the level, the quantity that actually satisfies the demand. So that is time to market is more related to R&D and time to volume is more related to our process design. So we have to reduce the lead time. 
approach to choosing suppliers is suppliers are primarily chosen based on cost and quality so quality is sort of order qualifier but another important factor is low cost of uh, the products provided by the supplier so that overall cost of the final product is low and eventually we can offer the product at a lower price in responsive supply chain the, uh, the supplier is selected primarily based on speed flexibility and quality again is always required the speed and flexibility are key uh, characteristics of the suppliers because the demand is uh, changing quickly it is unpredictable so suppliers need to be adaptive as well product design st strategy is uh, in the case of efficient supply chain to maximize performance and minimize cost the cost you can see is there off and on because if this is an efficient supply chain so we are focusing a lot on on cost in responsive supply chain we may use modular design modular design as you saw in the case of differentiation strategy in order to postpone product differentiation as long as possible so so far you might have realized very well that the efficient supply chain actually is looking to reduce to reduce costs so the strategy the business strategy that uh, might be being utilized here is the low cost provider strategy and here in responsive supply chain the strategy would be most probably differentiation strategy and where production environment might be used so low cost strategy mostly uses make to stock production environment and here we might be using as you saw in the last point as well uh, either assemble to order or make to order production strategy and you can think more um, on the points mentioned in the slides to to link this slide with the concepts that we have discussed so this this classification is very important so functional products in general require an efficient supply chain make to stock production environment as we saw and low cost business uh, low cost business strategy innovative products require responsive supply chain maybe most of the time assemble to order and uh, make to order production environments and differentiation strategy so this is what we have seen that is a summary that efficient supply chain actually matches for functional products and responsive supply chain actually is suitable for innovative products so just a food for thought you have to think over it that functional products can be innovative like new products or promotion of an existing product and over time innovative products can become functional so the feature that actually differentiates an innovative products with the passage of time becomes a requisite uh, feature it becomes an order qualifier so innovative products become functional so for example mobile phone initially didn't have the option of camera so initially the models that had camera uh, in those models uh, they those models were innovative but nowadays camera is an integral part of a smartphone so that has become an order qualifier so innovative product that is a cell phone with the camera has become functional so once upon a time there used to be black and white televisions so color televisions were innovative products but with the passage of time they became functional so we have an activity here on the <clears throat> on the x axis we have demand uncertainty so it increases from low to high and on the y axis there is volume and that is also increasing from low to high and you are required to fill these four cells using make to order assemble to order or make to stock so in simple words we are asking you to uh link the two types of supply chain with the manufacturing environment 
one of these three manufacturing environments. So I would recommend you to pause the video here and try to fill these cells using either of these three ones. So if you start from here, uh, so in this cell, we have low demand uncertainty, so demand is certain and volume is high. Demand is known, volume is high, so it, it seems to be a commodity product. So here we will have made to stock manufacturing environment. So I move to I move to three first. Sorry, I move to four first. So here demand and certainty is high. So demand is uncertain and volume is low. Demand is uncertain and volume is low. So that seemed to be a make to order environment. So manufacturing strategy will be made to order. And when both are high, volume is relatively high as well as demand is uncertain. So we may use postponement or delayed differentiation. So strategy will be assembled to order. In this unique case when both demand, uncertainty and volume are low. So demand is certain, demand uncertainty is low and volume is low. So we may have made to stock environment here because this is an efficient supply chain. So in summary for the responsive supply chain, we will use either assemble to order or make to order in production environment because demand is uncertain. If the volume is low, we might be going for make to order and if volume is high, we will be going for assemble to order or postponement or delay differentiation. So for efficient supply chain, when of course in both cases, demand will be certain, but when volume is low or even if the volume is high, that is generally the case, we will use make to stock environment. And this is especially the case when the process is new the industry is making a commodity item, but its processes are new, its capacity is low. So it has certain demand, but still it is not going for mass production because of limitation on its capacity, for example. So that is the summary that efficient supply chains have certain demand. So we use make to stock. Generally the volume is high. And responsive supply chain either use assemble to order or make to order strategies because demand uncertainty is high and volume can vary. So we can choose from here in this segment we discuss two types of products, functional and innovative, their difference, uh, the two types of supply chains that is efficient and responsive and how we can link those supply chains with, with the three production environments that we discussed in the last lecture. Thank you very much.